Powerfield. It's shocking. Who saw that coming? Uh, Ray Charles. Click the links to join the channel here over subscribe star or uh, send me something. I have a mailbox. So Rings of Power failed. Why exactly did it fail? Briefly, the backstory is Amazon got the rights to tell some of the Lord of the Rings story. Limited rights for a quarter billion dollars, which, keep in mind, is pretty limited. It's somewhere early in. And, and for comparison, Disney got limited rights for Star Wars for $4 billion. So it tells you the kind of money that's being moved around, but it also tells you the expectations on the profitability of even limited rights to tell the Silmarillion. Um, they were thinking, like logically you think, okay, we'll just try to do something like Peter Jackson, try to stay as close to the story as possible. Um, and you, you're not exactly going to be printing money, but you should have a solid hit on your hands. And they look at you like, oh no, you dear sweet summer child. We're not, we're not curative. We're transformative. This is just a tool to push this Bolshevik nonsense. What do you, what do you mean? Yeah, we're going to fill it with all kinds of propaganda. Ah, I see. It's, it's like you have reasons that are different than a standard, uh, yeah. You have an identitarian or ideological um, motive, not not a business one. It's like that's that's exactly what they're going for. So uh, similar to uh, Disney, so they made a series. Perhaps you've seen. You probably haven't seen all of it. If I'm keeping it hundred with you, because as it turns out, many people did. Most people did not see. Oh, they saw some of it that they didn't get to the end. So you probably saw like at least the first episode. It's it's horrible. Uh, horrible doesn't, I mean, you can go watch it yourself. You can find it online somewhere. There are a couple of things going on in the background. This is, this stuff didn't arise in a vacuum. The Wu flu, which caused, uh, for them a beneficial two year delay because it was so bad that it might help some people forget it. It's, um, uh, it's not going to make a difference because it's not like they're going to take that two year period and fire the cast members that don't belong and replace them with people to look more period correct or, or authentic to the story. It's like, no, that's that's not going to happen. So the two-year delay doesn't do anything for them. It's not going to help them in any way whatsoever. Uh, for some reason, there were like the whole Wolf Flu thing, like a lot of Hollywood take that very seriously. I got to admit, I did not take it um, very seriously right from the start. I, I washed my hands, but that was about the only thing I did differently. And I always kept one of those um, those extra pair of panties that you put on your face. I always kept one of those in my uh, my pocket. I think I still have some of some old cargo shorts floating around three years ago. Another factor is the cost. So far, maybe seven hundred million dollars, maybe more, went into this, which sounds like a lot, but in Hollywood, that's actually not a lot of money. That's maybe two movies plus the advertising that goes into the movies and then preparing the film for the DVD or the Blu Ray releases. It's just not that much money it's not a big deal and in terms of amazon and how big they are it's really nothing amazon did, did very well during the uh, past couple of years of the uh the woo flu and yeah there's plenty of conspiracy theories go around that but if you talk about it on the mainstream you will just get kicked off but the thing is this doesn't hurt it's like i guess the truth does for your investigation this doesn't hurt amazon uh, say it cost them 750 million dollars and it has a net loss of a half a billion dollars or, or more it's just a gamble it doesn't pay off for them not not all uh, hollywood's got a long history of, of bombs late more more so lately but like you know they have to have, they have to gamble on things not everything's going to pay off but i don't think it hurts amazon video at all they still have other good movies on amazon prime video even if, if this one is a, not something you can just skip over the other thing is that the cultural backdrop drop of the world that the movie was dropped into this rise of cultural bolshevism and the anti-european hatred that the media is pushing we're all well aware of things in a way we just weren't five years ago. The globalist media machine is accelerating things. They're hate machine, but we're also putting on the sunglasses and we're finally starting to see them. So we're not going into rings of power cold. We know how much they hate us. We know the lay of the land in Hollywood. And by now, a fair amount of us are sick of it and we're very much sick of them. We feel about them the way they feel about us. So why do rings of power bomb? Because it wasn't Lord of the Rings. It took an Englishman's story set in mythological Europe and erased the European people from the story that they created. There's even a ridiculous scene where one of the elves, the, I don't know what you call them, uh, without using hot words, um, one of the elves has to talk down and degrade a blonde human in the bar scene, which is odd because, uh, keep in mind, a European wrote the story, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Until it makes sense, then you just you just hate everyone involved in uh, in making this show. 
Um, I guess I can, I can use Acnation's euphemism, call them sun men, a sun, a sun elf. So the series comes in the midst of all this bullshit anti-European hatred, which again is weird because the stories they steal are all European. It's like they view the Europeans as gods, but hated ones that they're jealous of. So people go into the series, and it, lovely dog, and it has some chick that is just completely unlikable. So anyway, it's got this chick in it. She's completely unlikable, and she's, I don't know, I know in this this thing she's supposed to be like a, a million years old or whatever, but in real life she's in her 30s, and the whole time wondering, like, why aren't you at home with your kids? Nobody wants to see a woman run around in these shows when a man would clearly be better in the roles. When you see the original Peter Jackson films, very few chicks were in the film. You didn't miss them at all. It, not everything has to be for everybody. And, you, and the, you, you say that, and the Bolshevik just loses their freaking mind when they hear that. And But then you get to the replacement of the Europeans with non-European people, which is a problem for us because we value our tribe. Now, here's the thing. The past few years have also awoken us to where our sort of in-group preferences have also have, have increased massively to the point where all these other groups have already had um, the privilege of these in-group preferences. And we're just trying to catch up and they're starting like, the, oh my gosh, you're so istophobic. It's like, no, we're just becoming like like all these other groups. Um, and they immediately, they immediately add home, straw man, and deflect. The thing is, we're, we're value, we value our tribe and are obviously disgusted with these, these idiots in Hollywood pushing this kind of European iteration. I don't know if they'll show it in here. No, they, they don't show the, uh, they don't show the, uh, the other, the, the sunny, the sun, oh, well, 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 her in the background. They don't show the other, the, the um, other hobbits. So you're all one tribe together. Yeah, that's right. Some of you are European and some of you are African. So how exactly are you a try? Don't ask questions, bigot. Is that the bar for for being a bigot? Is asking basic logical questions? Apparently, it is. Um, so the thing is, we're um we're also starting to get these in, in group preference, which is 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 a good thing. Um, and we're seeing how much like we're kind of seeing Hollywood in a way that we just didn't see it before. You see, like oh, Hollywood really just hates us, and we're starting to hate them. Which is a good thing, because I, I don't, at this point, I don't even think they're human. So Rings of Power had an uphill battle. It wasn't the same environment if they had tried this in the 1990s, where we didn't know what horrible people they were. You can be a normie in Normstan, and you're starting to see the, the um, uh, underneath the surface of, of Hollywood. You can see that when they say diversity, they really mean this anti-European hatred. At this point, you can see that they've been the problem the whole time. We're awesome. I'm not kidding when I say that. I mean, we're awesome. We're not the problem. We're the solution in most situations. We're apparently so awesome that they have to steal our stories instead of just writing their own. Maybe they really can't create, so instead they can buy the rights to stories and use the name recognition as bait and switch, which really does make them parasites. They infest new hosts and spread the disease of envy and hatred, and they deliver garbage. This stuff is, and the thing is, it's not like they don't have their own stories to tell. Oh, yeah, 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 we're not going to tell the Dahomey tribe story. Like, why not? Ah, uh, because it that goes against the narrative. It's like, who cares? Humans act like humans around the world. Yeah, yeah, but the narrative has to be anti-white. But that's a false narrative. European people are awesome. Yeah, but that's where we're, we have to brainwash people to get all the hatred focused on just this one little group of people. So Hollywood deals with um, funding, which is coming like the State Street Vanguard Larry Fink, BlackRock type of thing to get the, the you know mutual fund funding for these type of investments, and then it deals deals with actually making the show itself the production and then the distribution and the monetization of it. And if you look at like oh I want to the Dahomey Tribe movie get, gets made, Woman King gets made right, and it's a it's a bomb because it's it's insane. It's a fictionalized version of actual events. So you go hey I want to actually tell the real story of the Dahomey Tribe, and these are the projections. We can make the movie for five million dollars, and it'll make a it'll net. Um, you know, a clear profit. Like these are solid projections. Go, yeah, we're not just not going to distribute that movie. Why? Because it, the narrative is that the French and the English have to be bad and, and that a homie have to be good. And you're like, but that's not the history. And there's like no shortage of history that that explains that. And they look at you like, yeah, yeah, we just can't make these kind of movies. You'd have to do it independently, try to monetize it, and you get the idea. Distribute it. It's like, where are you going to distribute it? When there's like a, ha a dozen a half a do dozen companies that are all kind of the same um, good think mindset. Anyway, so <laughs> editing on the fly to be so careful. 
when I think of Lord of the Rings, I'm thinking of some vaguely English, Irish, Scottish story. That's what I expect, and that's what I want. And when you say that, and you go, oh, hey, can we have this discussion like adults without ad hominem deflection and straw man? And they look at you like, no, no, we can't do that because we don't know how to argue without. So what you're saying is you're Hugo Boss and you want to invade Poland. I just, can we just speak like adults? You know, the, uh, the logical fallacy pyramid where you, you attack the, the main point of the argument, not the person making the argument. They just can't do that. I mean, even if, like if there if there's any if this video um, hundred views, um, then it'll just all be like our people. But if it's a thousand views on the video, um, you'll get people in the comments who will, who will like literally straw man. So what you're saying, uh, Jordan, Pete, whatever, is it's like they I don't know if they know what they're doing or if they're just too far to if they're so in a, deep in an echo chamber if they're too too far to the left of the bell curve or what anyway um you go yeah yeah i, I prefer to see english irish scottish or at least european people in the story that's what i want and if they don't if they can't reframe that as a straw man i i mean you can't counter argue that because it's a subjective opinion and and it is in accord with the original story universe so there's really there's really not a whole lot to say about that instead we get afro hobbits dwarves and elves mixing with euro ones uh or, or with the uh the dwarf scene um so there was a scene oh god where they were uh you know it was a uh, the dwarf husband and wife and um you go so the kids what do the kids look like well, we don't know because in that scene in the show, they had the kids running around with um, buckets on their heads because they were playing. I don't know if they showed the kids later on in the scene, but I thought, oh, that's weird. And you like, don't just let scenes like that go by you when they introduce the characters and they didn't show the kids. The kids had buckets on their heads. And they, oh, they're playing. Yeah, but where, when are they going to take off the buckets? I don't know if they did or not, but it was a weird little scene that you didn't want to show you what the product of this... Um, this uh marriage was like why were you hesitating on just showing the kids up front why did you put they're playing around with like helmets on their head or something weird like that to conceal their their faces um that that should make you take some notes anyway why would amazon promote that sort of thing where uh when you mix those these two different types of dwarves you're losing the individual traits of each each uh, person forever and you're getting this new mix but what they're saying also and they did this in the gunslinger with stephen king's uh book that was made in books that was made into a movie is you just happen to come along and catch these people just as they started to mix they did that in the gunslinger there's a scene where they enter some town and there's distinctly asian chinese woman distinctly african guy distinctly european people and they're all these mixed couples and you go so you guys all just came together like within the this generation and we just happened to start filming within this generation. Keep in mind, this isn't in the book at all. You go, none of this makes sense unless you're just doing this for cultural Bolshevik purposes, for propaganda purposes. Like, well, yeah, of course that's why they're, they're doing it. That's why they had the scene with the dwarves. And that's why they'd seen in the gunslinger. It's like none of it makes sense until it really makes sense. You're like, oh, these are, these are friggin' uh, demon people anyway um the thing is uh european story is no longer a european story it's for non-europeans except it never goes the other way then if it does they call it cultural appropriation so it's okay to culturally appropriate and corrupt european stories but not the other way around that just seems like anti-european racism because it is i see rings of power and it's frankfurt school propaganda i don't want to see non-europeans steal a european story or to be used as pawns by these filthy puppet masters and the soft bigotry of lowered expectations the characters in lord of the rings are going to need to be english or at least from the good parts of europe why exactly would i want to see africans or asians replace my tribe and and tell a story that tolkien didn't tell I don't want to see that. And um, most people who like Tolkien also don't want to see that. Propagandists want to see it. It's like when they interviewed the people who are getting hired for the show, it's like for them, it's just a paycheck. I get that. It doesn't matter if it's The Little Mermaid and, and uh, Hans Christian Andersen or whatever. The thing is, I don't think you're going to tell the story of Shaka Zulu with uh, Ryan Gosling. That's the point. This only goes one way. They're not telling a Chinese story and replacing them with, with someone else because they get... They, they would get laughed at. And if you did it in China, I think they'd probably tear down the theater. 
Um, they don't value European people, mostly because they're too left of the curve to see how awesome the Europeans really are. They value their tribe, which doesn't make sense because they're stealing European stories. One would think that they would be more humble when they're stealing an Englishman's story and putting self-inserting themselves into these stories and not seeing that they didn't create this thing and yet they're somehow taking pride in something they didn't create. That's insanely embarrassing. I mean, this is an L, but like they they don't see it. None of these people, these these SJW kids on Twitter, like you really don't see this as an L because you don't want to see it as an L. So like, why don't you just tell a story, Shaka Zulu, just tell some authentic African stories if you want want this so badly? Ah, uh, because it was a like that was be like Sun Man on Sun Man violence. We're not going to show that. Ah, it's just like if you can't tell a story that's F the Europeans, that, that story's just not going to get told. It's like, yeah, that's what cultural Bolshevism is. It's all anti-white propaganda. So they value their ethnicity in storytelling, but they don't think the European is important to the story. Again, because a lot of these people are, are just, you know, brainwashed SJW kids. The story came from an Englishman who evolved the story out of European mythology combined. You know, it was a story for his kids and it came out of his experiences uh, in World War One or whatever. But it's also like a lot of things are mixed into that story. Even some of the names he used in this story are taken from earlier, um, earlier mythology. And I went, I remember when the the movies came out twenty years ago. I went back and I read some of the mythology, and there's like like shadow facts. You see where he he it, it talks in an interview with him where he got some of the names, and he's like, yeah, I openly borrowed from earlier stories. It's kind of an homage to him. That's where like shadow back shadow facts and some of the other names came from. So the thing is, um. Everything about the story is Europe is from these European people, the beautiful people of the light. But the people who want to appropriate these stories, it's not well. The Hollywood folks are not too dumb to see it. It's just like this is part of the humiliation ritual of a, a conquered people. The irony is that they don't actually value their own stories because they refuse to tell their own stories, or when they do, they tell a very fictionalized version of the Woman King, where they tell a they tell the opposite of the truth. Where the, the French and the English are the bad guys. You're like, no, no, the history's out there. The French and, the French and English were trying to stop the Homie tribe from trading their neighbors. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to tell that story. But the story, you're, like, the history, it wasn't that long ago. The history is very clearly laid out. Yeah, we're just, we're going to have to turn it around to make it F the French and English. Like, but that's not what actually happened. Yeah, but it makes us feel better. Okay. I mean, like, there's no arguing with people who want to, who are this deep into Pravda. So, no, removing the Europeans from their own stories doesn't open up the audience because the people who like the books and movies like the organic setting. People like Tolkien because it was a European story. Most people hate Bolshevik propaganda. If their argument is that the new audience can't identify with it, if it doesn't look like them, doesn't the same apply to us? Again, keep in mind, an Englishman created this universe. At some point, you just realize they're the problem, not us. If they want a story made into a movie, they could just write one, perish the thought that you actually put pen to paper, have it you know, slowly catch on around the world, become a monster hit over the next 80 years, then made into a movie by some you know, Peter Jackson type of guy, and then they make a movie on one of the, the other lesser-known books, of Silmarillion, something like that. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to do... Even in the interviews they're open about, they're like, yeah, we want these things quick. We, we want to cut to the end. We don't want these 80-year processes. It's like the 80-year process is why it's such a classic today because it stood some test of time, even if, even if it, it was you know, 80 years a relative short time. They go, yeah, we just want to jump to the ends. Like, but quality takes time. You can't jump to the ends because otherwise you end up with with this kind of nonsense. And they do the same thing with, with comic books. Uh, a master class garden doesn't grow overnight. And there's no garden without a gardener. But these weeds and vermins literally cannot create an enduring story. All they can do is buy the rights after the creator dies and subvert it and corrupt it like liar warm tongue whispering to the king. They're the problem. Everything will make so much more sense when you just admit that to yourself, that we are awesome. And so, no, they don't want to wait 80 years, even if they could create a story, which they can't, because good stories are nationalist, tribalist stories based on your blood tribe. Things have stakes when you're fighting for your tribe. And if you watch Rings of Power, you see this, this group of people, you're like, so what are you fighting for? It's like Coca-Cola versus Pepsi? There's, You have nothing to fight for. You have There's no... What, what's unifying you? It's like our way of life, our tribe. 
you're not a tribe because nations are de derived from people. Tribes are the people. You're not a people. You're just a commercial, the, you know, the equivalent of a, of a, a American com or Canadian or Western commercial zone. It's like the countries are no more. Bullshies tell globalist stories. They make no sense. They don't have verisimilitude. They don't connect deeply with people because they're propaganda, like they're openly propaganda. They can't stand the test of time because they're rootless. And I only say this because the examples so far are of them buying stories that better people created and subverting them to push globalist propaganda. Like with everything you see before you from Witcher to Willow, other people create and these parasites come along and destroy. These globalist cancer stories are just a repackaging of Bolshevism from 1918. Propaganda doesn't endure. Their philosophy is so weak that they literally can't put their ideas into a book or movie that catches on with people. When they try, even the soy boys and cat ladies refuse to actually pay to see the movies. They love the idea of Charlie's Angels, X-Women, Terminator, Vagina Edition, Birds of Prey, Bro, She-Hulk, Willow, and probably a bunch of other crap that came out I don't even remember, but they don't actually pay to see those movies. Everything they do is crap, but then they also take things that were good and they turn them to crap also because they can't allow you to look at good nationalist tribal blood stories and hold those up as, oh, see how much better things are when we're, ooh, don't go down that pathway. Why? What's wrong? This is like, this is a much stronger, yeah, they're just gonna, they're just gonna pinch that in the bud. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's, I mean, you could make a six-hour video on this, but you couldn't make it for YouTube. Anyway, so when I was um, t t putting out these bullet points on this, I had a Lord of the Rings playing on in the background. And, I, and to try to compare the two, to really compare the two, would be a very long video. But there's one scene in the middle Lord of the Rings movie, The Towers, where there's some... Uh, vaguely brown guy. He looks like he's a Pacific Islander. He's got curly hair, a little bit darker skin, darker eyes or something. He's on an elephant. He catches an arrow and he falls down dead. And the, uh, the soldier looks at him. I don't know if it's Bormir or Faramir or one of those, one of those guys, the, 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 one of the king's sons. And the guy looks at him and he humanizes him. He gives this little eulogy for him and he respects the dead, even if he is the enemy. And it was, um, it was a nuanced scene. Lord of the Rings had a lot of nuance where the protagonists weren't perfect characters. They had to refrain from hurting people, like unnecessary cruelty. They had to refrain from, there's a scene where like, one of them says something like, it would be easier just to delete this character. And I think Gandalf says like, until you can create his, you know, bring his life back, don't be so quick to take it. And it shows a lot of nuance to these characters where they just weren't perfect perfect good characters they had they had good and bad to them and you go oh so why can't modern stories do that because modern stories are non the protagonists are non-european characters they're um they're these pox characters you know so they can't make them nuance so one of the characters in rings of power is an african actor would you give him a streak of malicious savagery and cruelty it would make him a more nuanced character but how well would that go on over on twitter if you if you gave him that kind of savagery, it would go over like a Led Zeppelin. So they don't do it. So that soft bigotry of lowered expectations, where they go, no, no, we actually don't want to be treated equally. Yeah, we know that. Like the they that's why they censor speech. They don't. They can't abide being treated equally. Um, so they're flat characters. They're two dimensional characters. Where all the other European characters in the original movie were very multifaceted characters. They were constantly struggling with their you know left left and right hand path and they they took the right hand path but it was a struggle they can't you can't do that with non-european characters because only europeans are uh the characters are upheld to this put on this pedestal of this like godlike status and um i know this sounds a little weird but look at the pox characters that are portrayed in movies in the past 50 years and tell me i'm wrong you're going to have to look very long and hard to find a non-European character that has that kind of nuance. Like, I mean, just go back and watch the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, anyway, so part of the reason that scene works where he's, uh, he's, t he's eulogizing this guy who falls down off the elephant and, and saying, like, you know, he died for what he believed in and, you know, he loved what, what, what he was fighting for as much as we, you know, it was, it was showing that he had a little bit of doubt. And it was, it's a complicated scene, but the scene works is because the guy is clearly the foreign. He's the external. He's dark hair, dark eyes. He's clearly not of their tribe, which is supposed to be vaguely English or, or at least European. 
but it does a lot of things. It, it humanizes him and it also distinguishes him as the other, but also having some human traits and characteristics. It's a level of nuance and that you compare it to the Rings of Power, you're like, oh, this is not even, like Rings of Power was written by children. Uh, and you look at like um, Tolkien and Peter Jackson, uh, you know, at least the original source material to come up with Peter Jackson's version of Ring of Power. And like that was written by adults who were very, who were trying very, very hard and they pulled it off. And you know, Rings of Power is, is just, I mean, it's written by, like, it would be the equivalent of, of, of it, I was going to say it's high school kids, but it'd actually be worse than high school kids because they probably would have less pro, less open propaganda on it. Anyway, so in, in the original story, you had blood tribes. They're, they're, everyone is coming from a distinct tribe, which makes sense to people. People are not fighting for words on a piece of paper called a constitution, whatever. They're fighting for tribe against tribe. It all made sense. Things have stakes. You're willing to die for your own tribe. But in the, in the Rings of Power, it's all this you know diverse commercial zone story it's like you're not going to die for someone who's not of your blood tribe because you want your genes to carry on and when someone doesn't look like you they're not of you like what what are you fighting for oh you're not fighting for anything you're just going to pack up and leave like that's what happens in commercial zones you saw the ukraine a bunch of people in the beginning who were not of that area just packed up and left like yeah we'll come back when it's we'll come back to be uh when it comes back to being just a safe commercial zone it's like well that would yeah you why would you stay and fight for your way of life it's like yeah, we're just going to leave and go somewhere safer. And, you know, the, well, that would happen in Lord of the Rings also. That's why it doesn't have verisimilitude. So in Rings of Power, the groups have all these different types of hobbits and elves and dwarves all mixed together. So what exactly are they fighting for? They're not a tribe. That's just a fiction from a Marxist imagination. So if in Rings of Power, you got a mixed Euro-Afro-Asian group fighting. It's like Walmart America versus the warlords of Google Facebook. Lord of the Rings worked so well because there were so many blonde and red-haired Europeans in it. In the original movies, there were many scenes of close-ups of blue eyes, which have always had a blonde hair, blue eyed a lot of those characters, or red hair, blue eye, which is even rarer. They had a magical, mystical quality that other colors don't have, partially because they're so rare, but also because they're coming from a legitimately, well, metaphorically, I guess, magical, mystical group of people who created so many wonderful stories. Hollywood doesn't take African, Asian, etc. stories and replace the characters and push those stories. Those stories Hollywood doesn't believe are good enough. Only the godlike Europeans have stories worth telling. The other thing that ruins the story is the setting. All the knights in armor, castles, swords, wizards, uh, horseback, and domesticated animals. Uh, that's all distinctly European fantasy. At the most, you could say it might, it might branch out into Eurasian. So when you swap out the European for these non-characters, it doesn't make any sense because th their mythology, the non-Euro mythology and history is totally different. They didn't have stories with dragons, castles, chainmail, and iron plate, and, and all this kind of advanced, for the time period, um, uh, techniques. They have, have some interesting history and stories, but it's radically different from the Europeans or the Asians. So you see the uh, Sunmen characters in Rings of Power, and you wonder what's going on. Why are they, why are they replacing Europeans? And it, it makes it all harder to take when you go, ah, wasn't Tolkien an Englishman who wrote the story? Yeah, he was. So Englishmen wrote the story based on European mythology and you're replacing them from the story that he created instead of just either one, writing a new story and letting it develop or two, taking a story from another culture. Well, yeah, but we want to sell this, tell the sword and sorcery type of story. It's like, well, that's distinctly European. You you can't set that in, in Africa because it, even as a fantasy world is still an analogy it doesn't work because they didn't have that in their timeline. They didn't do that stuff historically. They had a different story, you can tell. And like I always mention, Henry Ryder Haggard was telling those stories pretty well. Why don't you go in that direction? Like, oh, we're not going to do that. Because that's not part of the humiliation ritual. Anyway, this is the second version of this. This is as careful as I think I could make it. I think I'm okay. Anyway, uh, click the links. If you want to support the channel, subscribe, start cash, buy me coffee, the various other links. Thanks to uh, LG Vegan wide awake and everyone else over there and i will see you guys next episode